This is the Wildcat Coal Lodge, home of the University of Kentucky men's basketball team. The 20,000 square foot dorm, opened in 2012 at a cost of over $8 million, includes lavish tributes to Kentucky basketball, flat screens detailing the team's daily itinerary, and constant reminders of the program's history. The Coal Lodge allows the Wildcats to live alongside one another and forces them to stay focused on basketball every second of the day. This represents a stark contrast to the world of a Yale athlete. Unlike most Division I schools, Yale and its Ivy League peers have a policy of fully integrated living among athletes and non-athletes. I have friends that play Division I sports, uh, specifically soccer, all over the country. and I know that they basically just hang out with their team all the way through and they're not really a part of their campus community. That's not how we, we do things here at Yale. It's pretty cool. In 1996, the NCAA took steps that made all Division I schools a little more like the Ivy League when it banned athletic dorms. In an attempt to curb special privileges for athletes and more closely connect them with the rest of student life, the NCAA mandated that at least 50% of any wing or floor of a dorm consist of non-athletes. In the Wildcat Coal Lodge, this means that 16 regular students live alongside the 16 members of the basketball team, meeting the minimum requirements of the NCAA. Across Division I schools, most athletes are living in similar circumstances. So outside the Ivy League, it was almost exclusively living with teammates. I have a friend from high school who runs at Illinois, and he, he's rooming, his roommate his freshman year was on the team. They all lived in the same area. All of the facilities that you use are all the same. So I ate in the athletic um, dining hall, which is in the stadium, and we had tutoring all together, all the athletes. I was uh, concerned some other schools where I mean, the coach just said, like on the official visit, the coach said outright, you will be living with your teammates, you will be with them like 24-7, you will eat with them, you will literally like sleep in the same room as them, it's, uh, you don't get a break. But at Yale, athletes are distributed among the residential colleges, giving them a more diverse experience than their counterparts at other Division I schools. We have some athletes. We had, uh, we had guys in theater groups. We had a girl who was really interested in a cappella, you know, a girl who like did a lot of IM sports, a girl who was in like an orchestra. Last year, I think each of my freshmen was, uh, one of their suite mates was from a foreign country. Um, so the experience of that alone is terrific. Even though Yale athletes don't live with their teammates, they still spend upwards of 30 hours a week with them competing, traveling, practicing, and studying film. For most athletes, coming back to suites of non-athletes offers a chance to unwind away from the competitive atmosphere that they spend so much of their time in. You're spending probably four hours a day with the guys on your team every day, both in season and out of season, so you see enough of those guys, really. We spend like every single second with each other, and I think as a freshman, it's kind of nice to be able to spend all that time with your team, but then be able to go home to a completely different group of friends and get to know more people that way. When you meet friends, that are not involved in the things that you do. Uh, it's nice to have uh, that sounding board, nice to have that support that, that isn't exactly your team. This arrangement is beneficial not only to the athletes, but also to the health of the team. If you have people who are constantly training together, studying together, living together, it's very easy for people to fall into a kind of a cycle. That can sometimes be like a very fulfilling experience, but it also has, I think, the potential to go, um, to go bad and actually end up inhibiting the chemistry of the team. It could either bring us together closer as a team because we'd be spending much more time together, um, or honestly, we could get sick of each other. Going from class to the gym, hard practice, to dinner, back to the dorms together. I think, honestly, spending that much time with anybody might just kind of, you know, may even separate you. Yet the strongest Division I programs keep athletes and teammates together. The SEC, the Pac-12, the Big Ten, they're going to have their athletes room together because they're getting up early to work out. They're trying to get them to eat uh, together in, in a more healthy environment. They're trying to work it so it's a very, it, you know, it's kind of a job in a sense. The scheduling component is what most often causes housing problems for Yale athletes, who generally have to go to bed and wake up much earlier than their non-athlete suite mates. There's definitely um, many, a, a good number of instances where there would be people in my room late at night and I'd have to wake up at 5 a.m. the next morning. The real biggie is waking up, you know, morning workouts are typically 6 a.m. And so uh, you want to be able to put someone in a room together that doesn't mind getting up at 5.30. However, not all athletes face this problem. Trumbull College houses its freshman athletes together. 
While their performance may benefit, they run the risk of being isolated from the rest of the students in their year. My roommate uh, is a, one of the quarterbacks for the football team, and we're both in the fall season, so you know, our first semester here we were pretty nose to the grindstone taking care of like the, the sports side of things first, and it, I think it helped living with someone who understood that. I wouldn't say that it had negative social effects, as one might imagine. You're still eating together, you're still in the same building, you're still like hanging out together. Um, I think it's easy to kind of segregate yourself. A lot of athletes' friends are up in the same kind of bubbles with, with each other, so you might not really branch out and be meeting the, a bunch of different people. Whether other residential colleges should implement a similar policy or not is up for debate. It's really good for the athletes to get some of that adversity at some times of having to deal with people that aren't necessarily your best friends and making it work. I mean, that's life. And I think they get a good sense of that early on here. One coach has taken extra steps to keep his team mixed in with the rest of the student body. This past year, Tony Reno, head coach of the football team, instituted a policy that requires his players to live on campus their junior year. The piece of it is, is that they get the chance to get away from it. Um, get away from football, get away from the the athletic mold and be able to be a true student. And um, I think that's a nice balance for them. I think in the end, it's gonna really make them a better student and a better athlete. For several members of the athletic community, this sentiment rings true. People in my suite are gener almost entirely outside of my social circles. If I had been living with my team, I think it would have been very restricted, very just kind of insular. When I was a freshman, and even l last year, not living with only football players, um, I think it's good to come back and just hear what else is going on and just know there's stuff going on outside of just your own sport. The connection between the two groups never fades, but as athletes move through their Yale career, they tend to spend more time with their teammates and often move off campus to live with other athletes. However, some students suggested that this is true of anybody involved in extracurricular activities at Yale. If you look at any extracurricular group, that's more not only based on like a a team aspect but it also has a large social component, you're going to be drawn to that activity. Whether it's your dance group, your acapella group, you hang out with the people that you do things with. Of course you're going to see athletes hanging out together, but that's, I mean, if they're on the same team, you know, it's because they're on the same schedule, that, you know, they have the same interests, they can, you know, talk to each other about things that they know about. Even though the residential college system does not always create lasting bonds between athletes and non-athletes, it does help address common misconceptions between the two groups. There are stigmas attached to the, to the sports teams that maybe aren't necessarily fair, and by getting incorporated within the student body, you know, you uh, get to make some friends and maybe do away with some of those negative stereotypes that we sometimes encounter. It's much harder to criticize your friends than it is to criticize you know, someone who you've never met, who you've never seen. Housing is just one aspect of student life, but it has far-reaching effects on sleep, happiness, behavior, and social life. Where the competitive edge lies is difficult to say, but it is clear that housing makes being a Division I athlete at Yale a truly unique experience. For YTV, this has been Kevin Kucharski reporting.